The mid-season transfer window opens today, so let's get into it. We've signed a couple of players, and we may have a lot of interest in some of our younger players. And we've made one sale as well. Pretty big one. Hey guys, RC here. It's episode eight of our journeyman save. We are with uh, Grenoble Foot 38 in France's Ligue 1. And here are our three new signings. We have signed a 24 year old winger in Heinrich Mulling. Uh, he is a three and a half star. We get a B grade on him. 24 year old German valued at 49 million, three and a half star current. Four star potential, so a little room to develop and grow. Uh, he came up through the Borussia Dortmund system. He's been out on loan at various spots. Uh, only 59 starts, uh, 10 for Borussia Dortmund in 57 58, uh, 10 uh, last year, and he was on loan at Wolfsburg uh, the beginning of this year. We've signed him for $14 million. And I think he is a good piece of business. Uh, we play with an attacking winger, and you can see his passing is a little on the low side, but it's it's manageable. Everything else looks stellar. And if we look, he is uh, right there with Nagano as our best current winger, and he has the most upside as well. And you have to remember, Nagano is 30 years old, so currently a star player but he may have just lost his spot. Uh, maybe not this year, but definitely next year. The really good thing about this is Mulling only wanted to be considered a squad player, so we don't have to play him this year. So that's really good. Uh, next up, we brought in 19-year-old center back Jorn Vander Hayden uh, for $900,000, signed him for a $7,000 a month contract. Uh, one and a half star current ability. Three and a half star future potential. Uh, center back out of the Netherlands. Six feet tall. He can already fill all the rules. And if we take a look, current ability, he's sixth best. But if we sort by potential, uh, he is he's even with Nimic Quinonez. Of course, Quinonez is out on a wing right now. Uh, so he's got some potential that could step in and play for us. Uh, and again, only 19 years old. And then we signed another 19-year-older goalkeeper, David De Grassi. Uh, cost is $225,000. He'll be making $33,000 a month. He came up through the Juventus system in Syria. Uh, he actually played for Juventus's under-23s uh, this year. 15 goals allowed in 18 starts. So not bad. And if we take a look, he's got some good potential, and so he'll fit into our depth. Uh, we'll probably put him down in the youth for right now. Uh, Aguiar is there. Uh, Vasher's probably going to find himself going out, as will uh, Sine. Uh, if, you know, how quick, don't know. But Degrassi fits in there, probably th third or fourth choice keeper right now. So we have sold him, or we have brought those three guys in. Now we do have one player going out. That is going to be a 30-year-old midfielder, Abdullah Guzel. Uh, he came to me uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, and said he wanted a bigger challenge, or he just wanted a new challenge, that he had been with the club for a long time, and he just wanted a new challenge. He's fallen out of favor with me once I took over. Uh, he has not been a huge starter, only two reserve appearances uh, after coming up in the system. 238 appearances, 47 goals. Uh, last year was his best year for the club, and I think a lot of those goals and assists came after I took over at the tail end of the season. So we are selling him on to Tranmere. Uh, he will join them tomorrow for $25 million. So that's a good pickup. 
and we have a couple of we have a new staff member that we're uh, bringing in or at least that we've got an offer out to and uh zisco gordon uh is a french player i think he's french nope spanish we've got a bid on him and he's better at marking than either of our two current center backs now he's on an end of contract so that won't take place until the end of this season so he won't be looking to come in this year but i thought it was a piece of business that made sense uh that i could get him on a free right so that's what we've done taking a look at our schedule uh since last episode which was red star uh we had a draw with breast 2-2 uh pecoranen and arudia with the goals there against uh sasho a 5-3 victory arudia with a brace martinez nagano and pecoranen uh with goals nagano was sent off in the 87th minute in that one strasburg we had a 1-1 draw eusebio martinez with the goal there in the 5th minute Bordeaux, we beat 3-0. Martinez, Ibarra, and Arudia with the goals. Olympic Lyon, a 1-0 win. Frank Gomez off the bench with an 87th minute winner. Nantes, a 3-3 draw. Ibarra with a brace. Nemes, 4-1 victory. Nagano, Arudia with goals. Martinez with a brace. Uh, he is sitting 12 goals, 3 assists now in 16 starts up top for us. Today we're going to have uh, the, uh, uh, we also had a 4-1 defeat to Valencia uh, there in the Spanish First Division. Uh, that was just a friendly, just to kind of keep fit. We're playing uh, Ajaccio in the French Cup ninth round. And then we'll, pl uh, we'll have highlights from that. And then we will have uh, the match against PSG today. So if you like what, what you see here, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for daily football manager content, and let's get into the highlights. We've got Ibarra coming up the right. He crosses it. It's blocked. He lays it off to Leclerc, who got the start in this one, and he scores there, making it 1-0 in the 27th minute. Panasini, Quinonez. Over to Ibarra again, leading the attack. He drops it into Martinez, who runs onto it. Easy goal makes it 2-0 in favor of Grenoble. And in the 55th minute, it's Leclerc, the cross of over, headed down by Ibarra, and Martinez gets his second of the match. 3-0 in favor of the foot. And uh, that is a good win in the French Cup. Uh, their manager, they're not as good as they think. Mulling made his debut. We get $87,000. Ibarra gets uh, three assists. We'll give him some credit. Uh, let's see. So he's already a star. Oh, he's, his expectations are a star player. Well, he's already a star player, making 531. He's under contract. You know what? We'll trigger his extension clause. No, we're going to walk away. I'm just going to trigger the extension clause. Let's ask Marty if he can uh, talk some sense into him. No longer wants a new deal. That's good. All right, so we've triggered the one-year extension on Pekaranen. I mean, I'm, I want to keep him, right? We don't want to let him go. He's only 28 years old. But he is a guy that I could let move on if we can get another uh, really good central midfielder. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to keep him, but we've triggered him to 64, so he's got three more years on his deal. Uh, I'll look to maybe extend him next year. All right, well, let's get into PSG in six days. I had to remember to go in and register the uh, three guys we just signed. And uh, so that uh, changes our setup here a little bit. We're going to go with Kanz Yuskel in goal, Fran, Dopper, Nimic, and Quinonez on the back line. Nagano is going to drop into the midfield here. Uh, Garcia suffered uh, broken ribs, is that what, fractured ribs in training a couple of days ago. So he's going to be out for about three weeks. So Nagano is able to drop back. Ibarra can also drop back. But with Mulling signing, we've got Nagano able to drop back and put Mulling in there. 
Uh, I want to make him a true winger. And uh, then we've got uh, Arudia and Martinez up top. Uh, we'll have Leclerc on the bench. So let's get to this, see if we can give uh, a good match to uh, PSG. That would be great if we could do that. Not expecting it just yet. We're slowly, we're slowly getting, uh, getting it done. It's not a bad crowd, but not a sellout, which, I mean, you, you know, we're playing PSG. Why this isn't a sellout, I don't know. Let's encourage him from the start, and we get the first highlight. There's a big cross, and it goes right into Diamant in the defensive mid, and then he's through the channel. Nagano closes down on him. Now, the good thing about Nagano is he is a pretty decent marker, and there's an example of that. Sana wins that header, gets it back into the attack for PSG. Tackled away, there's Mulling. He's going to circle it around to the keeper. All right, let's not play around back there, fellas. That was stupid. And a shot, big save. And finally, they lump it out. Boy, we got lucky there. That was some, some half-assed defending uh, decisions there. PSG, two shots, none on target. We've had one shot, but it was on target. I mean, look at that. I mean, we're, we're clearing it, but it goes, you know, well, we're kicking the ball. It's not getting cleared. It's just not going very far. Let's demand more. Pantaloni, Pantaleone for PSG. Oh, look at all the space out there on the edge of the box. And nobody closes down Fredrickson. He gets his seventh of the season. Yuxel just hung out to dry there by the defense. That was not very good at all. Is this going to be the replay? Yeah. So. Fran, so they, they basically overload our right side. Fran's with Broad. Everybody's marking up, but that leaves uh, Rickard. Now, who got beaten? That was Nimick's man. Uh, he doesn't follow Fredrickson, and he's left with the open shot. So that's Nimick's guy. We'll blame him. And it's... Uh, Grenoble nil, PSG one. This won't really hurt us. I mean, you know, we kind of want PSG and Lil to run the table unless we can catch Lil. But you know, we've uh, you know we've got five point advantage on rain, uh, rhymes. And honestly, going in at the half down one, that's not the worst thing that could happen. All right, at least they're motivated. We'll demand more again. Mulling playing a 6-3. Like to see a little bit better out of him. Both of our midfielders are tired. I was thinking about moving Nagano back out to the wing. Let's drop. Let's, let's drop Ibarra back for Nagano, and then we'll bring in uh, Leclerc on that right side. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's swap him with Arudia. Just to, I'm planning that we're going to lose this game, but this way we put Leclerc in where we've got a promise to play him in a position, and that way, you know, we're at least working towards meeting expectations on that. All right, we've got the wall up, and. Yuxel should have done better there. It looks like it went right through him. It went around the wall. I think he had plenty of space to pick that ball up and make a play on it. This will be... Yeah, he just, he just didn't get his hands on the ball. That is not good. I'm going to berate him here. 
All right, there's a deep ball over the top, and what a save there by Yuxel. That was a low, hard shot. I think we uh, did a good job getting a save there. The header goes high. They are really controlling the match. We've got 10 shots. We actually have a higher XG. Let's bring Gomez into the middle there, I think. We do lose some marking ability there. Actually, let's put Gomez out there, and let's bring Jimenez in. All right, that'll be our last two subs of the day. We're going to go attacking. Ibarra's up. The header is in, but he was offsides. Martinez was offsides on the play. I saw the side judge over there. Maybe he was wrong, but no, that would have been too, uh, too lucky for us. Yeah, he just stepped off. I mean, he was a fair side off, so can't complain about that. And four minutes of stoppage time. This one's away from us. So a 2-0 loss to PSG. Probably not the worst thing that could have happened. I'm going to go hands on hips, but I was pleased. I mean, they played well. We gave up two goals, but we were competitive. And that puts us on 20 matches. Still five points up, but Reims has a game in hand. Would have liked to have gotten a little something there. but And that ends our 11-match unbeaten run. So that is disappointing. We've got the 10th round. We are expected to make uh, the quarterfinals. I, I have no idea how many rounds this goes. 11 rounds and then the quarters. Okay, that's fine. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the cup until we come up against some better sides, I guess. Uh, we're playing uh, Bologna. And they are in League 2. So, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and skip that one. If we, Assuming we win that, we may come back for the 11th. Barring anything else, maybe we'll come back for, uh, you know, Marseille and Lille could be a good matchup. Why don't we plan on that? Olympic Marseille highlights. They're fifth in the table. Lil are currently second in the table. Uh, we'll come back for that next episode. Uh, if you liked what you see or like what I'm doing, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager content. And we'll see you guys next episode. Thanks for dropping in, and we will see you next time. Bye.